Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about the different pressure relationships that we're learning about in chemistry class. Um, you, um, you've done some labs and you've discovered what those relationships are and we're going to sum those up in our notes here. And we're also going to look at um, the simulator again and see if we can't find some relationships there. Okay, so uh, make sure you put your name, class period, and date here. Um, our objective is 3.3 .3 pressure relationships and um, our essential question is how are pressure and volume, pressure and number, and pressure and temperature related? So we're going to talk about those three relationships. So, okay, so um, the first one we're going to talk about is pressure. Let me zoom in. Where's my zoom in to? Oh, there it is. All right, I can write prettier this way. Pressure versus volume. P for pressure, V for volume. Okay, so we did a lab where we changed the volume and we figured out what happened to the pressure. So you had the little syringe um, attached to the gas sensor and you, um, you didn't add any new gas. You just pulled it out or pushed it in as hard as you could um, and measured the pressure. And despite the fact that you probably struggled a little bit with that, you should have seen that the more you squished it in, so the less volume, the more pressure, and the more you pulled it out, the, the less pressure... Um, so it looks like this. So your graph should have looked like that. That is called an inverse relationship. And what that tells us is that those things do the opposite. Inverse, that means they do the opposite thing. Um, so as pressure goes up, volume goes down. And as volume goes up, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Pressure goes down, whoops, nope, hang on, I'm trying to write pressure, there we go. Pressure goes down, volume goes up. So they do the opposite there, um, and it happens to be kind of the same number. So if you were going to think about this through mathematically, if you have twice the pressure, then that would mean that you would have half of the other, okay? Um, so when one goes up, one goes down. And likewise, if you had three times of one, you'd have one third. So you're literally taking that inverse, inverse reciprocal, whatever you want to think about it. So that's what you're doing. So pressure and volume. Now that makes sense, right? So let's take a look at our little uh, simulator here. We'll add some particles. Woo, there we go. Okay. So this one's pressure and volume. So as I move this guy over, I'm making the pressure go up because those particles don't have as much room to go around in. They bump into the walls a lot more. When I make it bigger, they have a lot more room. They don't bump into the walls as much. If particles were people, it would be the same way. In a tiny elevator, people bump into each other when it's packed full of people, but in the same number of people in the gym aren't going to uh, bump into each other or the walls nearly as often. Okay? Let me get back to the notes. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so then the next relationship we want to look at is um, pressure and number. So I'm using N for number. Um, the number of particles, um, that's how much gas we have. So in the lab for this one, what you did was you took and you added some gas to the syringe and then you made it take up five milliliters of space. And then you disconnected it, you added some more, you made it some five, you made it take up five milliliters of space. So you were squishing that gas into the same volume each time, or stretching it out. I don't know if you tried any of those. And what we found was that um, the more gas we stuck in there, the more pressure we had. And so our relationship looked like this. This is a linear relationship, and that means that they change the same way. So when we have our pressure go up, it's because the, we had more particles. And if we had the pressure go down, it's because we had fewer particles. Oops. Um, and so just like I did up there with the math, if I had twice of one, then I'd have twice the other. Three times one, three times the other. They change the same way, okay? So let's take a look at our, our little simulator again here. All right, so um, this one will be harder to show with uh, fewer particles, but you can see that when I add more particles, I have more pressure. And when I let the particles go, I have less pressure. 
more particles go, less pressure. Okay. Um, <coughs> uh, we saw with our data that it was it was in fact twice as much when you had twice as much volume. So let's go back to our notes and talk about the last one, temperature. Okay, so here we are. Temperature is the last one. Pressure versus temperature. Okay, so on this one you had a flask and, um, and the flask had a little tube that was connected to the pressure sensor and <clears throat> we changed the temperature and it's hard to get a bunch of different temperatures but we saw the same idea that the higher the temperature was the more pressure we had and the lower the temperature was the less pressure we had. So this is also a linear relationship. There are actually three relationships that you had to find. Um, linear, again, means they change in the same way. So when one goes up, so does the other. When one goes down, so does the other. And again, it's the same way. So if I have twice of this one, arrow, then I'll have twice of the other one. Pretend that's an arrow. And if I have three times of this one, then I'll have three times of the other one too. Now this is the one where we have to measure it in Kelvin. In Kelvin. Remember Kelvin temperature measures it relative to absolute zero, which is no motion. <clears throat> if we're measuring it in Celsius, twice the temperature doesn't mean we have twice the pressure um, because we don't have twice the energy. Twice, twice the Celsius temperature <clears throat> Twice the Celsius temperature doesn't mean you have twice as fast particles. Um, does not mean two times the movement. But that is the case when you use Kelvin. Two times the Kelvin temperature does mean two times the movement. Um, so two times the Kelvin temperature does mean two times the pressure. So we have to be very careful there. Um, that we're making sure that we're looking at our, our values in terms of the temperature. Now the up and down thing will still work, but we won't be able to do the times, um, the, the how much it changes unless we're using Kelvin temperature. Okay. All right. So those are the three relationships. Um, when you write the summary, try to talk about all three of those and then make sure you ask some questions about those. Oh, I, we got to look at this thing here. All right. So let me let out some more of those particles. We've got quite a few in there. Okay. All right, so this one, when I change the temperature, um, notice how it already had the Kelvin temperature listed up there. And when I double the temperature, I'm doubling the pressure. It takes a little bit of time to, to add there. That's actually a little realistic because the, the particles have to kind of distribute the energy around. And then I can remove the heat, about half the temperature, and you'll see that I have about half the pressure again. Um, it's the same idea with um, multiplying uh, by any other number, whatever you multiply one, you'll multiply the other. They've changed the same way. If you divide one, you'll divide the other. Okay. All right. So uh, work on your homework. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.